Okay, so we now go to Section 246, the non-retroactivity of rulings. I want to discuss mm -hmm. uh, exclusively on this because paborito kayo sa examiner. This is all about, uh, well, the doctrine of operative fact. San, uh, that's CIR versus San Roque, equitable estoppel, and the general interpretative rule. Now, in section 246, 246 says, BIR rulings or regulations are not given retroactive effect or application if prejudicial to taxpayers, except if there is deliberate misstatements or omission on the income tax return or any document submitted to BIR, or facts on which the ruling was based are different from the subsequent facts gathered by the BIR, or bad faith on the part of the taxpayer. Now, there is this, as I mentioned earlier, this San Roque case. This is all about this Section 112 on their claim for tax refund on the excess input but tax on zero rated sales because they relied on the issuance of the commissioner. Uh, remember the the IG which changed the the before the IG doctrine. Um, the BIR or the Supreme Court said uh, you, can, you you don't have to wait for the one hundred twenty days. Okay, to expire before you go to the CTA but because that's on the assumption that there is this BIR ruling they base that on the BIR ruling and the Supreme Court in San Roque because there was confusion there San Roque cleared that up the the, the case mentioned the doctrine of operative, operative fact is actually, the Supreme Court said, incorporated in Section 246. As stated, taxpayers may rely upon a rule or ruling issued by the commissioner from time from the time the rule or ruling is issued up to its reversal by the commissioner of this court. The reversal is not given retroactive effect. This, in essence, is the doctrine of operative fact. There must, however, be a rule or ruling issued by the commissioner that is relied upon by the taxpayer in good faith a mere administrative practice not formalized into a rule or ruling will not suffice because such mere administrative practice may not be uniformly and consistently applied. An administrative practice, if not formalized as a rule or ruling, will not be known to the general public and can be availed of only by those with formal contacts with the government agency. Or yeah, So since the law is already prescribed in Section as we already prescribed in Section 246 of the Tax Code, how the doctrine of operative fact should be applied, there can be no invocation of the doctrine of operative fact other than what the law specifically provided in Section 246. What is that? This one, the exception. And in the present case, the rule or ruling subject to the operative fact doctrine is BIR ruling DA48903, dated December 10, 2003. Prior to this date, there is no such rule or ruling calling for the application of the operative fact doctrine in Section 246. So, Section 246, being an exception to statutory taxation, must be applied strictly against the taxpayer claiming such exemption. So, this is all about uh, relying on the ruling of the BIR. And as 246 says, it cannot be given retroactive effect because what was done by the by the uh, government agency cannot be of course undone that's the doctrine of operative fact it is it is discussed there actually it's also found or it's prevalent in constitutional law what the government has done and later on or when the court you know uh, declared a statute unconstitutional. You cannot erase what was done by the government. So, the the they had to respect that. That's just saying moving forward. Okay, move on. So, past is past. You don't have to, you know, uh, rock the boat there. 
you don't retroact any um, any effect on the new ruling on this. So that's section 246. Just memorize this, okay? The exception. And there is this also in this case, the equitable estoppel. So in this, in that case, in San Roque, the, the High Court said there is no dispute that 120 day period is mandatory and jurisdictional, and that the CTA does not acquire jurisdiction over a judicial claim that is filed before the expiration of the 120 day period. There are, however, two exceptions to this rule. The first exception is if the commissioner, through a specific ruling, misleads a particular taxpayer to prematurely file a judicial claim with the CTA. Such specific ruling is applicable only to such particular taxpayer. The second exception is where the commissioner, through a general interpretative rule issued under Section 4 of the Tax Code, misleads all taxpayers into filing prematurely judicial claims with the CTA. In these cases, the commissioner cannot be allowed to later on question the CTA's assumption of jurisdiction over such claims since equitable estoppel has set in as expressly authorized under Section 246 of the Tax Code. Why? Because it becomes prejudicial to the taxpayer already. What happened here is that, well, San Roque may have relied on the ruling of the commissioner at the time. And further, since the commissioner has exclusive and original jurisdiction to interpret tax laws, Taxpayers acting in good faith should not be made to suffer for adhering to general interpretative rules of the commissioner interpreting tax laws. Should such interpretation later out turn out to be erroneous and be reversed by the commissioner or this court? Well, indeed, Section 246 of the Tax Code expressly provides that a reversal of a BIR ruling or ruling cannot adversely prejudice a taxpayer who in good faith relied on the BIR regulation or ruling prior to its reversal. So that's equitable estoppel. So remember the two exceptions. First, if the taxpayer relied, one taxpayer relied on the interpretation. Because they, you, you can go actually to the BIR class and say, A, a BIR, we need, we are doing this. We are doing this in our business and we are not really sure if, this is taxable or not. So we need your advice. The, the, the commissioner will, will say, ah, well, it's not taxable, etc. So you relied on that. But later on, the BIR realized, well, it was a mistake. I was advised by this, this, this. We have to reverse that. So you relying on, at the time, that new ruling cannot retroact to your reliance it's like as i've said moving forward always or the second exception is that the secretary of finance or the commissioner issued the ruling and all taxpayers relied on that in good faith and later on the ruling was reversed the that new ruling now will not retroact because you've relied or all taxpayers have relied in good faith. That's the gist of Section 246. It's all about if it is prejudicial to the taxpayers. And again, you say, I said, memorize the three. Okay? Paborito ka examiner plus Section 246. And you also have this general interpretative rule. As mentioned here, any general interpretative rule issued by the commissioner may be relied upon by taxpayers from the time the rule is issued up to its reversal by the commissioner or this court. Section 246 is not limited to reversal only by the commissioner because this section expressly states any revocation, modification, or reversal without specifying who made the revocation, modification, or reversal. Hence, a reversal by this court is covered under Section 246. Taxpayers should not be prejudiced by an erroneous interpretation by the commissioner, particularly on a difficult question of law. 
the abandonment of Atlas doctrine by Mirant and IG, as I've said, as I've discussed earlier, is proof that the reckoning of the prescriptive periods for input VAT tax refund or credit is a difficult question of law. The abandonment of the Atlas doctrine did not result in Atlas or other taxpayers similarly situated being made to return the tax refund or credit they received or could have received under Atlas prior to its abandonment. This court is applying Mirant and IT prospectively, moving forward. Absent fraud, bad faith, or misrepresentation, the reversal by this court of a general interpretative rule issued by the commissioner, like the reversal of a specific BIR ruling under Section 246, should also apply prospectively. Okay? Thus, the only issue is whether BIR ruling DA48903 is a general interpretative rule applicable to all B taxpayers or a specific ruling applicable only to a particular taxpayer. So, this DA48903 is a general interpretative rule. Why? Because it was made a response to a query made by a particular taxpayer, not by a particular taxpayer, I'm sorry, but by a government agency tasked with the processing of tax refunds and credits. That is what? The one-stop shop interagency tax credit. So that all taxpayers are uh, affected thereon. So this government agency is also the addressee or the entity responded to in the BIR uh, ruling number DA48903. This while this government agency mentioned in its query, the commissioner, the, the administrative claim of Lazy Bay resources, the agency was in fact asking the commissioner what to do in cases like the tax claim of Lazy Bay resources, where the taxpayer did not wait for the lapse of 120 days, period. So clearly, the BIR ruling number DA48903 is a general interpretative rule. Thus, all taxpayers can rely on this ruling from the time of its issuance up to the time, up to December 2003. Uh, well, the BIR issued that on December 2003 and up to the reversal in IT in 2010. When this court held that the 120-day plus 30-day periods are mandatory and jurisdictional. So what happened, as I've said, from December 2003 up to October 2010, the taxpayers relied on DA48903, wherein it, it was stated substantially that, okay, you don't have to wait for the 120 days because as you've learned in section 112, there are cases that the 100 or the two-year prescriptive period would already have expired before the BIR decide on the tax refund claim. So that was the interpretation issued by the DA48903. You don't have to wait for the 120 days. That's from December 2003 to October 2010 when the court reversed the true link. That's IG. So from this October 2010, when you file a claim from there on, then you have to wait for the 120 days. But obviously, what, October 6, so in October 5, when you filed your claim, you are still covered by DA48903. That reversal cannot, that reversal by the court, huh, cannot affect your tax refund claim. Okay, it's only from October 6, 2010. Okay, so that's, that's. 246. You just remember section 246 is all about the non-retroactivity of rulings. So remember the doctrine of operative fact, the equitable stoppel, and the general interpretative rule. Again, general interpretative rule is applicable to all taxpayers. That's just what happened here. And as explained in San Roque, I mean. So that's it for section 246.